Thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. So in today's video, I wanna share five tips for going out and photographing on blue sky days like we've got today when it's completely clear and there is zero interest up there in the sky. I'm gonna be taking my first shot here straight away and we'll get straight into the first tip. So the first tip that I wanna share about coming out and photographing on clear sky days just like this is to go out and shoot in black and white. And what we're trying to do when we're shooting in black and white like this is to just embrace the high contrast, especially when you're out in the middle of the day, like we are today. And I think this one's really interesting because generally as landscape photographers, we want to avoid high contrast scenes. You know, we want quiet side light. We want dramatic backlight when the sun is low in the sky. And I think we can look at high contrast a lot of the time as the enemy, you know, but if we go out and deliberately shoot in black and white, which for me is a little bit of a tip in itself, plan it. Don't let shooting in monochrome be an afterthought. Look at conditions like we've got today and think, brilliant, this is gonna be perfect to photograph black and white scenes. And I'll probably be doing that all day, to be honest. And as for the clear sky, because I'm thinking in monochrome and I'm using the picture profile monochrome on my Nikon Z7, I am looking at that sky as being jet black. And that instantly makes me feel better about photographing a sky that, as we've been saying, hasn't really got any interest. So for this first photograph, I'm just trying to keep things nice and simple. We've got this lovely little style down here that I'm just using as a bit of foreground interest. And of course, the dry stone wall is just leading the eye down into this beautiful quintessential Yorkshire Dales landscape, really, which is what we're exploring today. And of course, everything just looks so much better in the snow. Now, before I show you this shot, a little bit of a bonus tip for you is when we're shooting in monochrome, we're trying to embrace the high contrast. And more importantly, when we're trying to get that jet black sky that I've been talking about, and that is to use a polarizing filter. So I'll just pop this on the front here and I'll show you the difference this makes in drama. So if you look at it there, look at it there, that is without any polarization at all. And watch as I spin this round, the difference that it makes to the sky. Look at that, there you go. Fully engaged polarizer filter, really just helps to add drama. And like I've been saying, just get that dark, dramatic black sky that we so often want when we're shooting in monochrome. Now the second tip that I wanted to share about photographing on clear sky days, just like today as we're just getting a view of Ingleborough there in the background looking wonderful, is, well, something that I almost certainly won't be doing today and that is shooting long exposures. Now when I'm talking about long exposures in this sense, of course I'm not talking about movement in the clouds because we don't have any. I'm talking about movement in water more than anything. So think about being on the coast, smoothing out waves or being beside a lake and smoothing out all of the ripples or even a waterfall, you know, something like that. And just like in the first tip, this can help to add drama and probably a bit of simplicity to your photographs as well, which would really help on a day like today. In fact, the two tips combined, if you go out and do black and white long exposures on a clear sky day, that will be wonderful. And I think you can get some really powerful photographs if done properly. So I've just stumbled across this tree that you can see here. In fact, there's a couple of them. There's one that's maybe one or 200 meters further in that direction. I'll go and investigate him after this photograph. But this, I think in a way, brings me on to tip number three. I say it in a way, because I don't think it's 100% there. Tip number three is all about going out 
and taking minimalist photographs. Now this image is definitely not minimalist, but I'd say I'm trying to simplify the scene as much as possible. And I feel like the same principles apply, you know, I'm trying to embrace the clear sky that we've got today, which I think is the key of the whole video. Like the overriding tip, if you will, that I'd love to get across is don't try and battle against the sky and the conditions that you've been gifted in any sense, you know, deal with what you've got, work with what you've got, you know, embrace it. And really trying to simplify a scene for me fits in really nicely with the sky. I mean, look at it, it's so simple. There's no texture, there's no detail. And I think this particular composition really tries to make the most of that. And all I'm doing really, tree on the right hand side and then Ingleborough, the mountain off in the distance there on the left hand side. And I'm trying my best to keep the foreground nice and clean and tidy. You see, we've got all this, these rocks, these snow covered limestone, areas of limestone pavement. And yeah, I'm just trying to keep it as simple as possible. Now, just before I show you the image, I've got to show you this. This is a really important part of this composition and that is height for me this branch here has to be above the horizon. So that to me looks really messy. The moment I get lower down, that looks really clean and tidy. And again, I think that fits in really well with what I'm trying to get across, trying to keep things as basic and as simple as possible, really to try and work with these conditions. So whilst I wait for my chicken tikka and rice <laughs> to um, stew away there, you've got to leave it for like several minutes. Um, I'd love to say another massive thank you to today's video sponsor, which is of course Squarespace. So if you've never heard of Squarespace, I'm here to tell you all about them. They're an all-in-one platform that you can use to build your own website. It's a website that you go on to build your own website. Do not be intimidated about that prospect. With Squarespace, it is so easy to do. They've got loads of professional, wonderful looking templates that you can use. You add a little bit of text, a few images, and before you know it, your website will be up and running. If like me, you'd like to sell things through your Squarespace website as well, you can do that. They've got plenty of e-commerce options and I use it to sell my prints, my eBooks. I advertise my one-to-one -one workshops on there. I sell my calendars and I wouldn't be able to run my business without it. Once you've made your website, it will automatically look perfect on a computer, a tablet, or even a phone. Squarespace sorts all of that out for you automatically, and it just looks fantastic. I'm so proud of my own Squarespace website. I've had it for years, since before I was sponsored by them. I still pay for it with my own money, and yeah, I couldn't recommend them more if I tried. If you'd like to give them a go, There'll be a link in the video description below. Use that to get a 14 day free trial. Absolutely nothing to lose. You may as well go and give it a go and see how you get on with it. If you like your free trial, make sure to use the offer code Henry Turner at checkout to get 10% off your first purchase. Right, it is time for oh, the chicken tikka. So I'm gonna head down just on the other side of this dry stone wall here to inspect, to investigate this other tree to see how it frames up with Ingleborough in the background. If I get anything decent, I'll pop it up on the screen and show it to you. And then I wanna sort of move on in this direction, parallel with the dry stone wall, um, because I know it's wonderful up there and I'm excited to get up there in these conditions. And of course, I've got a couple more tips that I'd like to share with you. So 
So I hope you liked them images of the tree, if there was any at all. And as I've moved on here, I've only just come back over the dry stone wall, I've stumbled across this lovely little scene here that I really wanted to stop and show you. Um, mainly because, I mean, f well, firstly, I think it's gonna be a really nice photograph, to be honest, but it brings me on so nicely to tip number four. So tip number four is all about embracing textures, patterns, and shapes when you're taking your photograph. Now, to be honest with you, I didn't know if I wanted to include this as a tip in today's video, purely just because I feel like this should apply every single time you're out with your camera, no matter what you're photographing, no matter what sort of landscape you're at, it's always really important. However, I think it's even more important in harsh lighting conditions like this, when you're dealing with uninteresting skies, and especially if you're shooting in black and whites as well. And this is a brilliant example of a situation where I've managed to find some of these patterns here. So as you can see there, we've got the wide angle lens out again, polarizer on the front, which is just helping us to capture all of these beautiful patterns down here in this frozen puddle. I've got my little travel tripod out there because, <laughs> I mean, you can perhaps see there's a few cracks forming. I'm just trying to keep the weight to a minimum. And then, yeah, that's my foreground really. And then the background is once again, beautiful Ingleborough. Now, I haven't decided just yet if I'm gonna shoot this as a black and white or as a color. So I'm kind of, you know, gonna do both, changing the camera profiles and I'll choose when I get home. But what I love about finding little textures and patterns like this on a clear sky day, really, is it's just adding a little bit more visual interest to your photograph. It's as simple as that. You know, you've got no real visual interest in the skies. And although, although like I said earlier, we're not trying to battle against the lack of visual interest. It's all about complementing what's going on up there. So this for me is just adding something special, really, down in the bottom of my composition. And I think it works really well with the simplicity of the sky. So yeah, on a day like today, or like I said before, on any sort of day when you're out with your camera, keep an eye down at your feet, look for more intimate details in the landscape. So right off in the distance, back towards where the sun is blaring in, I just met another photographer who was photographing the first tree that I was at, if you remember. A lovely, lovely bloke, his name was Mark, and as it turns out, he follows the channel, which is just incredible. It's amazing, it's so humbling when I'm out and about. It's like, oh, Henry, I watch your channel. Uh, I always watch your channel. It's just amazing, so thank you so much to all of you, really. But yeah, cheers to Mark, if you're watching. Really nice bloke. And on top of that, he's kindly given us a little bit of a recommendation for what sounds like it could be a nice little spot to photograph. And he said, all you gotta do, mate, keep following this path up and you can't miss it. So let's go and see if we can find it and we'll get on to tip number five as well. Wow, so I think we found it. This is, um, this is exactly what Mark described really. I'll just show you as we've got, it's almost like, it's almost like a frozen tarn, I suppose. Big, massive puddle, so, oh my gosh. I mean, look how exciting this is. I mean, I'll probably keep it simple as well. The shot, something along those lines as you've seen it there, but I'm gonna mess around a little bit because you can see, again, just like the previous tip, we've got all these little patterns and shapes, leading lines. And I mean, look at the light now as well. It's fantastic, which is what I want to talk about regarding the final tip, tip number five. Oh, so this has just been absolutely amazing. I've just spent the last 15, 20 minutes wandering around all these beautiful little frozen pools, you know, trying to work with all these little tufts of grass. The contrast is fantastic. The light is off the scale. Oh, look at it. So all of that light has, I mean, the sun, Look at it, it's just starting to dip below the horizon there. So all of that sort of beautiful light, only two, three minutes ago was like down here where we've been photographing. And to be honest, this is one of many <laughs> compositions that are all quite similar. I'm trying them in both black and white and in color, just using these little tufts, these reeds, and I was playing with the light and everything. 
as leading lines, as interesting foreground, and then again, Ingleborough off in the background. I think this is a really, really good, um, a good, these photographs have been a good example of I think all of these tips <laughs> melted into one, which is good. Now, for tip number five. Now this tip is perhaps the most obvious, but it absolutely has to be mentioned, and that is, do not forget about the golden hours. Now, as a bit of a side note, you know, it's not all about the golden hours. You can get wonderful photographs in the middle of the day. We all know that. However, in my opinion, at least, these are the best times to be out with your camera. It's the times that excite me the most. This light has just been incredible. But my point is just because the skies are clear, just because you might be shooting in black and white, um, all of the things we've talked about today, just because you might be focusing on patterns, do not forget that the golden hour is the best light that you can enjoy I suppose in my opinion that's subjective isn't it um, it's the best light that you can enjoy in my opinion when you're out with your camera and just because the sky is clear you're shooting in black and white don't forget that you know this has been I think <laughs> the best photograph that I've got today or, or, or I felt the most excited at the very least which says something I suppose and that's because the light was incredible so I thank you all so much for tuning in I'll show you maybe one or two or three of these last images i've been running around like a bit of a headless chicken uh, but yeah i appreciate you all so much another big thank you to mark down there who um told me to come here and take photographs this has been epic and i really hope you got something from this video you know going out and shooting in clear skies can be brilliant and i hope i've inspired you to do that the next time there's a forecast for it and uh, yeah please do hit the subscribe button comment down below any other things you think i've missed about shooting in clear skies and i shall see you on the next adventure i hope you like these last images out. <laughs>